Hello, my name is David, and I'm here again with Chectro, and today we're going to replace the caliper. Tools needed for disc brake caliper replacement are 5mm Allen wrench, 4mm Allen wrench, 3mm Allen wrench, 8mm open end wrench, T15 Torx wrench, and alcohol solution. Included in Tectro's bleeding kit is bleeding injectors, hose cutter, piston stopper, hose retainer, compression ferrules, brass inserts, as well as mineral oil. Let's start by unbolting the caliper bolts. Next, let's remove the tap pad retainer bolt. Let's remove the pads, pushing them through, and pulling them out of the body. Using an 8mm open wrench, let's loosen the spanner bolt. After checking for length, use a hydraulic hose cutter and cut like so. Your hose cut should be flat and very clean to make sure a proper fit. Next, take your compression ferrule, making sure that your compression ferrule is facing inward, and slide it over the hose like so. Next, place the brass insert inside the hose and slide it in. To fully fit, press the brass insert in using the Tectro compress. Slide the hose through here. Hold the hose with this. and then press the insert all the way in. Sliding it back out. Now let's install the hose into the new caliper body. Like so. Using an eight millimeter span and wrench. Finish by torquing it down to six newton meters. After any caliper or lever change or of trimming of hose, it is always recommended to re-bleed your brakes. So we're going to go through the steps of doing that today. Let's install the piston block into the brake body. Then reinstall the pad retainer bolt. Like so. In preparation for bleeding is important to adjust the lever so that the reservoir tank is level to the ground or to the bike. It's necessary to do that in order to take out the uh, bleed port and not have oil spillage. Let's connect the injector to the adapter. Sliding this piece over, connecting the hose. And tightening down like so. Now I'm going to 
fill the injector up with around 20 millimeters of mineral oil. Using a T15 Torx wrench, I'm going to remove the bleed port on the lever. Here, let's attach the bleed injector to the lever. Like so. Using a T15 Torx wrench, I'm going to take out the bleed port on the caliper. Let's attach the injector to the caliper. Okay, let's start the bead process. And slowly push down on the checking for the bubbles coming into the system. You want to make sure you go all the way down using all the 20 mils and then holding and we're going to go back through the system making sure you're not pushing air back through and one more time from the caliper Let's remove the injector attached to the caliper first. Reinstall the bleed port. And it's recommended holding the caliper with a clean towel. using my T15 torch wrench. Now let's take off the injector from the lever. Before installing the bleed port, let's check modulation to confirm that there's no bubbles left into the system and then go ahead and reinstall the lever lead port. Making sure this is very light torque between, one point, between 0.8 to 1.2 Newton meters. Very light torque. The final step is repositioning the lever back to the customer's position. And always finish by using a torque wrench to seven to eight newton meters for final torque on the lever. With alcohol solution, let's clean any remaining mineral oil on the lever and on any of the any of the attachments all the way down.
and check to make sure there's no mineral oil left into the piston block. And let's remove the piston block and we can just moving piston block retainer. And sliding out the piston block. Before reinstalling and touching the new pads, I have changed my gloves to make sure I don't have any residue from the bleeding. Now let's reinstall the pad retainer. Now let's reinstall the caliper onto the fork.